Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and today we have a lovely full moon practice for the Taurus full moon. Because this practice is for the full moon, we'll still have some activity, but generally speaking in the theme of Taurus, this will be a rather slow, indulgent practice. So let's just go ahead and get into it. We're starting here, just seated. You can stay kneeling or find an easy seated position. Closing the eyes if you feel safe and comfortable to do so. We're starting here in this grounded position, so we really want you to feel the seated bones against the earth. Of course, is a very grounded sign. Very stable and reliable. So we want to begin channeling that by feeling the ground, the earth support us, as of course is an earth sign. Really feel your seated bones. Push into the war earth as the earth pushes back up into you. Gravity creates a natural tension of opposites. We'll start by walking the right fingertips out to the side. And lift the spine, lift the chin up tall, and then drop directly over the left shoulder. Of course, also rules the area of the body, the throat. It's communication and our listening skills. Of course, is a really good communicator, but they are also quite bullheaded. It's in the name, they can be very stubborn, I would know. If you'd like to add a little bit more tension, we can bring this left hand on top of the head, just resting it. Don't push or pull, just let the weight of your hand draw the ear closer to the shoulder. Breathe in. Breathe out. Drop the shoulders further away from the ears. Release the hand from the top of the head. Roll it back up to center. Take both hands to the top of the knee. Left hand out to the side now, moving slowly with intention. And drop the right ear over the right shoulder. So when the full moon is in Taurus, this is a time where we really take to indulge in the luxury of the home. very luxurious sign. You can take that right hand on top of the head now. Drop a little bit of extra weight if you get so on the first side. Keep those shoulders down and away from the ears. Feet into the body. So this is really, in my professionally, a Taurus opinion, this is a season. To lay in bed with your favorite shows big plate of food, and indulge yourself. Back up to center and release now as we came in. We'll take eagle arms, so arms come out at a 90 degree and go in front of us. We'll start with the right arm underneath the left, looping once or then looping around twice. Breathe in, reach the shoulders up towards the ears, and then roll them down, back and down. And lift the elbows up slightly as you begin to tuck your chin in. So around this season, this may be a time of ugly truths coming to light, releasing burdens, and surrendering to the unknown general theme of this cycle. It's also the time to break bad habits. And there's also an opportunity for abundance here, so whatever that means for you, financial, emotional, even spiritual, let's unravel the arms and then take them behind the back, clasping, and draw the shoulder blades together, kind of like you're trying to pinch pen or pencil in between your shoulder blades. Keep your elbows bent to start so you can really feel those shoulder blades connect and then work on straightening the elbows. You puff up the chest and look up. 
Igen. Last the elbows, and we'll take each arm to the second side. So take the left elbow underneath the right, looping once or twice. Breathe in, draw the shoulders up, down, and back. Keep the elbows up tall as you tuck your chin in. Kind of push your hands and your forearms away from you as you tuck the chin into the chest. Moving very slowly and centrally. Really important here that we connect to every individual scent or every individual sense. And yoga is a fantastic way of doing that because we can activate our sense of touch. That's on your lab or your arms, and then take your bind, take your clasp behind the back again, and then let's do the opposite hand and the opposite thumb on top. Draw those shoulder blades together as you puff up the chest and look up. Keep the shoulders down away from the ears. Release. Let's come over to table now. No rushing. Situated in our table, taking time and a pause in each pose, really feel ourselves stable against the earth. Breathing here with the palms beneath the shoulders and the knees beneath the hips. We can straighten through the right leg and just tuck those toes under and start rocking back and forth. We're looking for a calf stretch here, getting the back of the leg. Make sure we engage the core by hugging the belly button into the spine and then lift the right leg up off the mat. We can look forward and if the balance is there, we can reach the left arm bicep along the ear. We're just firing up the core and the back muscles a little bit. Breathe in, breathe out, set it back down. Breathe out, set the left hand back down, and then we'll kick and swing this right leg all the way out, kind of taking time in your transitions. Turn the heel in and the toes out and lean forward into this lizard pose. You can keep the toes tucked, keep them untucked, kind of rocking motion side to side, so really getting into the hips here. Breathing into it. And start to take this right arm up and around, facing the back of the mat for a twist. And this is enough for you can stay here, or if the flexibility is there, you take a quad stretch, grabbing onto the left foot. You can even come down onto this left forearm and intensify it a little bit. Whatever is in your range of motion. Let's release the clasp of the foot. Come back up if you were down on the forearm. We'll just step it back to tabletop. We'll go into the second side. So ground yourself here. Find us a strong and a stable table here. Taking this pause to really ground yourself. So, so powerful here and very necessary. And we'll take this left foot back, tuck the toes, and rock it back and forth into that calf. And when you're ready, with the toes still tucked under, first engage that core. So feel the belly button hug in to the spine. And then you can pick this left foot up, looking forward, holding here, and if, the, and if we have the stability, we can reach forward with the right arm, bicep along the ear. And 
deep belly breaths. You can take the right hand back down and then swing this left leg all the way around, trying to move slowly. And then lean forward into this lizard lunge. Like on the first side, we'll take some swing motions, really getting into that hip, hip flexor here. If we'd like to, we can take the left arm up around and back, going for that bind if we had so on the first side. And come down on the forearm as well. Just to intensify it. Release. We're going to tuck the back toes under this time. Lift the hips up and we'll step it back to our first downward facing dog. Especially here in downward dog, paddle out the feet. And find intuitive movement in whatever that may be for you. So I'm kind of twisting my hips side to side. Get a side body stretch in. Or you might find a stagnant hold. Feeling yourself strong and stable against the ground. I'm going to step this right foot in between the palms and drop the left knee down. We're going to come up into a lunge and I want you to make sure your hips, your shoulders are directly above your hips and your knee is still directly above your ankle. You're going to keep the hands on the hips and tilt the pelvis in to make sure that really engaging that core, so belly button to spine. I'm going to clasp the hands just like before, take it on top of this right thigh and then as you push against this thigh, going to tuck the chin in. So we're looking to really further engage the left hip flexor as well as the left quadricep. So really the front of the left leg, just changing the type of stretch that we get in this asana. Much more active version of lunge. Just like Taurus, we can be indulgent, we can be luxurious, but we are still dedicated to our ambitions and our goals. Let's plant the hands down with still with the back toes tucked under. Let's kick and extend through this front leg. Find a long pyramid. So breathe in, looking forward like a halfway lift, find a flat back and then release, fold over as far as you can over this front leg. Deep hamstring stretch. Come through forward from our lunge, plant the left palm down, open up on the right side to an easy twist. Right fingertips extend up. Breathe in, breathe out, circle this right hand back down, place it inside of the right palm, plant this back foot down at a 90 degree angle and then straighten through the front leg again and then open up to your lateral side coming up into a triangle pose. Extending the top arm, making sure your hips are facing the long edge of the mat. Breathe in and breathe out. Bend through this left leg, leg behind as you drop your hips down low. Skandasana. Maybe a tricky transition here, but it doesn't need to be graceful. But we do need to try our best. Getting deep in the hips. You can always keep your hands on the floor and then keep your hips extended upwards. If you need that range of motion. Come over to Skandasana, over to a second side, using your hands to guide you. Opening up through the hips, into the lower back as well. Let's turn over this front leg, coming back through our lunge, and step back. Downward facing dog. 
Take one breath here to stabilize. We'll step the left foot through to center. Drop the back knee and then come up. Make sure the hips, the shoulders are above the hips. The hips are above the back knee. Front knee is over. Front ankle. Tuck the tailbone down and in. Feel that abdomen engage, clasping the hands in the opposite direction this time. As you push and extend against this left thigh, tuck your chin into the chest. This is also a time to really consider what self-care means to you. What things do you, can you do for yourself to treat yourself? So maybe some of the suggestions I have given have not resonated with you, and that's okay. It's a very individualistic experience. Let's plant the palms down forward and extend through this front leg again. Inhale, find a flat back, adjust yourself, feel that left hip push back in two, and feel the right hip come forward. Breathe in, flat back, and breathe out, fold over. Like I said before, you're pushing the right hip forward as you're pulling the left hip back. It's okay to have a slight bend in this front leg. Let's come up through into our lunge once more. Plant the right palm and open up to the left side. Easy twist. Kind of like we're moving through honey. Every movement we do is slow and intentional. We'll take this left hand to the inside of the left foot. Plant that back leg down at a 90 degree angle as you straighten through the front leg. Turn and open up to your lateral side. Ankle pose, two dimensional. You might need to come up further to make sure that your hips are facing forward. That's okay. Also, kind of hold on to your shin bone as well for a little bit more stability. Whatever makes you comfortable. When we're ready, we can drop into the back knee, maybe using our hands on the ground to guide us into our skandasana pose. Again, hands can always stay on the ground to support us or they're up to heart center in prayer. Maybe using the ground to support us this time, or maybe not, come into your skandhasana on the other side. Make sure your spine is nice and long. Let's turn over this front leg again through our lunge and step back, downward dog. We'll stabilize for three, for two, and one. Let's walk the feet forward to the very top of the mat, find a forward fold, clasp opposite elbows, and find a sway side to side, just releasing the lower back. As we roll all the way up to standing, slowly shoulders are elastic at the top. I'm just going to turn so it's easier for you to face me. But just in the theme of the grounding Taurus, we're going to do some standing balance work, just a simple old tree. So feel yourself ground into the right foot, slight bend into the knee so you're not locking the joint. You can pick the left heel up to really feel yourself ground into that right foot to start. The heel can come to the inside of the ankle, can come up to the calf, or it can come up to the thigh. We're not putting the foot onto the knee because that's bad for our joints. Feel your hips kind of tuck and engage as we've been doing along this class. You want to feel your foot push against this thigh as your thigh pushes against the foot. And that actual tension of opposites will really improve your balance. Kind of takes your mind off of what your toes are doing. So find your drishti, your point of focus, something unmoving that you can stare at. Okay, if you wobble a bit, you can keep your hands on your hips for stability. 
heart center in prayer, we can grow our branches upward. One last little challenge is to close your eyes. Makes it way harder. We're going to be staying here, holding for a moment. It's this energy of this balance and the stability where the intention of stability is very powerful for this season. Also really great to strengthen your ankles. We can release this resisting a slingshot effect, just letting our left foot drop down gracefully. And then we can ground in this foot by picking up the right heel and spread the toes wide. Light bending through the knee so we're not locking the joint. We can come up through the ankle, up to the calf, finding really where you had your foot on the first side Maybe noting the difference between the two sides. Usually one side is easier to stand or to balance on. Take whatever hands you had on the first side. Maybe you can play with closing the eyes. Pushing the foot against the thigh and pushing the thigh against the foot. Try not to grip into your toes as well. When you're ready, you can release. Take the feet out wide towards the edges of the mat, heels in, toes out, and let's just drop into our Malasana squat. However that looks for you, whether you hold onto the floor to give yourself some support, whether you sit down and hoist yourself up, we're all meeting here. You can always place a block underneath the hips if it's just a little too much for you. And we can stay here. This is an awesome grounding and root, deeply rooting position with the root chakra facing directly into the ground. Or we can play with a little balance. As this full moon is happening under the Libra sign, it's then important that we not only ground in through our feet, but we ground in through our hands and our upper body as well. So if that sounds like it's within your range of motion, we go into a crow, spreading the hands wide, lifting the knees up to the triceps, leaning forward and picking one foot off and then the other, finding your balance, that point of focus, the upper body as well as the lower body. When you're ready, you can always set the feet back down, make your way back to your malasana in your own time. And let's sit the hips down behind us. Let's take one foot forward. We're going to take one foot back, setting up for a pigeon pose. So let's take, scoot forward and take this <coughs> right shin as parallel to the front as you would like it. The more parallel it is with the short edge of the mat, the more intense of the hip opener it's going to be. Plant the palms. Let's kick this left foot back, making sure it's going straight back. And you can bend into this knee as well to lessen the intensity. This is just too, too much for you. So breathe in, find some length first. Breathe out, fold forward over this thigh. That is comfortable for you to do so. You can stay up on the forearms and lay all the way down. Rather than pushing ourselves, we're more so finding what feels good and indulging in that. You can stay down in that pigeon, or if you'd like to add some variation, you can reach back with this foot behind you. You take a mermaid by hooking this foot to the inside. Hand of this, yes. So the left foot to the inside of the left elbow crease, reaching the right arm up and behind the head to clasp for a bind. And forward, a slight back bend, or if you want to go one step further, we can take a back bend. So grabbing the right, grabbing the left foot with the right hand, flipping the grip of your left hand, and then turning 
forward. I have not done this pose in a little while. That's a big back bend, a big harder opener. Breathe in. Breathe out. Release the toes gently. Then we'll fold over to thigh once more. Just as a counter stretch. And you push up into the palms, plant the hands down. We'll just step back into a downward dog, just to even out the hips. So really paddle out to the feet, get some blood flowing back into that right leg. And then we'll step the left foot forward, the left shin forward, laying it down, taking it as you did on the first side. And find some length, stay up here or start walking it down either to your forearms or all the way down. You can start to come back up if you want to play with your back bending sequence. First coming into mermaids, right foot to the inside of the right elbow crease, left hand reaches behind the head to clasp. Looking forward, breathing in really to your heart space. And breathing out, we can take king pigeon on the second side. So grab the right foot with the left hand to flip the grip of the right hand. Looking forward. And release. We'll lay this pigeon down one more time just to neutralize the spine. About three breaths here. And start to come back up slowly and mindfully. Come out wide onto our mats. Heels out wide. Going into a wide-legged forward fold so you can stay working here. You can always bring the heels in closer, keep the knees bent. Like I said, we're looking for what feels good. And when you're ready, you can start to walk the fingertips forward, maybe even coming down to your forearms, maybe even coming down flat. Feel like you're tilting your pelvis forward. And that will really engage into your inner thighs. Push into the palms to come back up. We'll take this left heel in. Keep the right leg as it is. Breathe in to find length. Breathe out. We'll take this right hand to the left. Yes, left knee and then bend, reaching the left hand over. Maybe grabbing onto the top of the right foot if you can. If your arm's more like this, more like this. All shapes are good shapes, everyone. We're just looking for a nice opening on the lateral side here. And let's come back up center and then turn over this right leg as you start to walk it forward. Maybe your head doesn't necessarily come down to your knee, but it's the intention, the ambition that counts. And fold. Fold. Let's start to come back up. We'll plant this left palm behind the hips, swinging the right arm up and overhead as you pick the hips up. Baby wild thing. Little opener here. And we'll sit the hips back down, turn towards the back of your mat. One last little thing. Hug this left knee in, cross it over the right. Squeeze it in with your right arm. 
you lift the left hand arm up and back, finding your twist. Release the twist, and then we'll open back up the center of our mat again, taking this time the right heel into center. We'll take this left hand on top of the right knee, and we'll reach the right arm up and overhead. Reach yourself back up to center as we now turn and twist over this left leg, folding forward and then noting the differences of the two sides once again. Push the fingertips into the mat, come back up to center, place the right hand behind the hips as you pick those hips up, swing the left arm up and overhead, a big opening here, looking behind you, and sitting it back down, facing forward this time, hugging the right knee in, crossing it over the left thigh, I'll hug this right knee in with the left arm, right arm goes up and behind. It was and release. So I really recommend that you lay down all the way into Shavasana as the Taurus would. I'm going to finish in a seated meditation with you. Now you can join me here seated if that's what you choose. The world is yours. I'm just giving you options. We'll start to close our eyes. And we start to turn inward ourselves, giving us a moment of rest and reflection. And I have 12 messages for each sign. Thank you. And if you don't know what your signs are, I'll make sure there's a link for you in the description. Where you can find that information listening for both our sun and our moon signs as I think they're both relevant. Obviously a little bit more importance to your moon sign as this is the lunar cycle. And then keep in mind that the message you hear may not resonate with you, may not connect, and that's okay. Not everything is necessarily made for us and there's nothing wrong with us. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with us for not connecting to the message. And there's nothing wrong with the message for not connecting to it. Starting with Aries. Aries, this is a time to be cautious with finances. Be open to asking for guidance and be open to receiving gifts and abundance as well. Taurus, this is not the time for imposter syndrome. You may feel at a standstill, but it is important that you stay true to yourself. You are aligned with, you are aligned on your path and just have faith in yourself. Gemini, this is a time to clear confusion maybe a test of faith, and there's some importance of shadow work to be done here. Cancer, it's okay to step back and to think of how you can be a better friend. This time also maybe revealing friendships that you have outgrown. Leo, you're in time for some professional attunement, 
You may feel uplifted, but do not act out of ego, as that will not be tolerated here. Virgo, it's time to find peace within the chaos and surrender to the unknown, as this time is presenting you with an opportunity to grow. Libra, you are due for major changes. Really time to toss out old habits, relationships, and other boundaries that are no longer serving you. Scorpio, where your relationships are shifting, it's time for you to decide which ones are worth saving, And really consider if those around you find your loyalty as sacred as you do. Sagittarius, your message is pretty simple. Just hide out and indulge in some self-care, darling. Capricorn, enjoy simple pleasures. By combating your worries with creative inspiration. Aquarius, don't be scared of vulnerability. Reflecting, compassion, and turning inward are all important here. Pisces, have boundaries and speak your mind with confidence. It's important that you stand up for yourself and you stand your ground here. So take in whatever you gathered from that, what everyone gathered. Take that in, reflect on it, consider it. And in time, when you're ready, release it with loving awareness. Don't try to internalize. Don't try to rationalize. Be accepting and be forgiving. Gather where you are, whether you're laying down or seated. We'll reach our arms up overhead as we breathe in. Breathe out the mouth as you draw it down to heart center in prayer, bowing forward. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me for this Taurus full moon class. I share hope you did. I know I did. Leave me a thumbs up and comment down below and subscribe for more. Thank you so much.